This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 713. What the bathroom scales are not telling you by Skylar Liberty Rose with tinybuddha.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. Happy Wednesday and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily where I read to you from popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health. Today's author is a contributor on Tiny Buddha and you can find her on Instagram at Skylar Liberty Rose. You can also find us on there. We have pictures of us hosts, some quotes, and we do book giveaways there. So find us at Old Podcast. And it's the middle of the week, it's Wednesday, so it's time for a little bit of inspiration. Quote, every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses, into something a little different from what it was before. C.S. Lewis. And what I love about that quote is it ties in nicely to what I was talking about earlier this week in episodes 711 and 712. We were talking about tiny little habits and how habits really are those things that define us. And if we don't make any changes, we can kind of sort of predict what our lives will be like in the future. But even one small change done consistently can change your life. So if you're new here or skipping around and want to know more about what I said about habits and things, check out episodes 711 and 712. But if you're all caught up, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. What the Bathroom Scales Are Not Telling You by Skylar Liberty Rose with tinybuddha.com. Quote, the only person who can pull me down is myself and I'm not gonna let myself pull me down anymore. See Joy Bell. At a recent visit to the doctor's office, I had some routine checks done. Afterward, the doctor flipped through the findings and said, blood pressure, good. Pulse, good. Weight, okay. He then continued to talk about other things, but my mind was still on his previous words. Weight, okay. Why wasn't my weight good, like my pulse and blood pressure? I had managed to completely skim over the fact that my vital signs were absolutely fine. I immediately fixated on the physical aspect and added my own negative slant to it. There's so much that is so deeply ingrained within us that even when we are self-assured, we still get caught off guard sometimes. A few weeks before the doctor's appointment, I'd gone shopping for a winter coat. I found one I liked, grabbed two sizes for comparison, and went to the fitting room. One size was slightly too snug under the arms, and the other gave me more freedom to move. But the better fitting coat had a label that read, large, and I had a problem with it. I tried both coats on again, as though somehow expecting a different result. I told myself I was just making sure, just being certain. Once again, I determined that the larger size was a better fit, except this time, I played it a little differently. Instead of just looking at my body shape and size and my reflection, I looked into my eyes. I reminded myself that I am a beautiful, empowered person who does not permit herself to be restricted by limiting labels and who does not measure her self-worth by numbers. And off I went to the cash register smiling. Both experiences gave me a bit of a wobble, but I was also grateful for the opportunity to remind myself of what truly matters. It can be challenging at times to keep our confidence intact because even when we deflect the worst of what some of society and almost all of the media tries to throw at us, occasionally it finds a way through. Yes, I could be slimmer. I could say no to the glass of wine or the homemade fudge. I could, but empowerment alert, I don't want to. I choose my life all of it. I choose the thoughts that I feed my mind and I choose the food that I feed my body. I strive to ensure that I'm in balance. There is a space between greed and deprivation and I, mostly, live there. Sometimes I wander. I'm okay with that because honestly, it's better for me to visit both directions occasionally than to be bent on staying firmly in the middle. I follow a plant-based diet and I exercise every day but I don't want to be fixated on a so-called ideal and unrealistic image that doesn't allow me to enjoy my life. Sometimes a little loss of control is good for the soul. Like many of us, I used to obsess about my weight. I would step onto the bathroom scales every single day and look to see if I could hit that magic number. Quite often I did. I also had a variety of hospital trips that unearthed low blood pressure, repeated urinary tract infections, and a brutal inner ear infection. And that's why I went to the cash register with a large coat and a larger grin. The bathroom scales cannot tell me how much my contribution to this world counts. They cannot tell me the density of the passion I feel for what I do. They cannot tell me the value of my cherished relationships. 
What if we stopped measuring our waistlines and started measuring our magical moments? The ones where we laugh like lunatics with our friends. The ones where we look down and find our hand wrapped in someone else's. The ones where we let ourselves get gorgeously lost in a book or a movie. The ones where we fill up on love and get dizzy drunk with happy. Will you get to the end of your days thinking, I'm so glad I spent all those years sucking in my stomach? Or will you smile as you remember how much you enjoyed creating precious memories? Will your final thoughts be that you wish your thighs had been slimmer or smoother? Or will you just be grateful that they carried you? Will you ponder on what everyone else thought of your life? Or will you just think, I'm glad I did it my own glorious way? I may have the odd moment of self-doubt, which is basically known as being human, but there are many, many more moments where I remembered that I've come a long way since being that younger, slimmer, unhappier, less confident person. I now have a wonderful weapon, an empowered mind. And believe me when I tell you, that doesn't play small. You just listened to the post titled, What the Bathroom Scales Are Not Telling You, by Skylar Liberty Rose with tinybuddha.com. And Tiny Buddha has some great books on their site. I'd recommend checking out the Tiny Buddha Gratitude Journal. It has questions and prompts for both your past and present. You can find that at tinybuddha.com. Now to be clear, I can feel pretty confident that the author isn't saying, well, just be happy with yourself even though you may not be the healthiest person that you could be. Instead, what the author is saying is, don't be obsessed with it. So sometimes what happens is folks will say, well, I'm happy with myself even though I have high blood pressure, I have an increased risk for all these diseases, my blood sugar is way too high, And again, the author is not saying that you wouldn't want to try and improve those things. You just don't want to become hyper-focused on imperfections. Be the best self you can be. I think that's what she's trying to get at. And if I were to get more technical about that scale, it's so true. The scale doesn't tell you so many things. And if we just think about straight numbers, the scale doesn't tell you how much muscle you have versus fat versus water versus your skeletal structure. It just gives you a number. And so it's easy to get disheartened by just looking at that number on the scale. If we don't dig a little deeper and maybe measure our waist and our hips and see if those have decreased, or if we don't check our body fat percentage, the number on the scale really doesn't tell us a whole lot. But if we start combining that number with other factors, again, like your waist and hip circumferences or your body fat percentage or how your clothes are fitting, well, now we can get a better picture of what that number really means. I've experienced this many times where folks will come to me frustrated after I've been working with them saying, the number on the scale isn't going down. And then I'll say, well, how are your clothes fitting? Oh, they feel great. Well, okay, then we're actually making some progress. You probably built some muscle and lost some fat. That sounds like a good thing, right? So yes, the number on the scale can be definitely misleading in a more concrete way, but also as the author mentioned, in a deeper, more emotional way. All right, really quickly before I go, if you're on Instagram, come follow us at Old Podcast. We do book giveaways there, share pictures showing where you're listening from, post quotes from the contributing authors, and lots more. Again, you can follow us at Old Podcast. I thank you as always for listening. I'll see you back here tomorrow with a post from Healthline and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show, and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.